This is the Church of St. Paul in the Desert. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. One of the challenges that we have in church is that I bet most people, when they get up in the morning to get ready to come to church, they're coming from a place where there are all sorts of things going on. Sometimes those are things that lead them to be really joyful and excited, and other times they look at church as the place they're going to to get away from all those things, or a place at least where they trust that they will be comforted and renewed. And I have to tell you that the lessons today don't give you much hope of that, if that was what you came with in, in mind of today. Because what we have is we have the baptism of Jesus, and it starts out with kind of our retelling of John the Baptist. And here is John the Baptist, who's baptizing out at the River Jordan. That's about 20 miles from Jerusalem. And he's out there baptizing people for the remission of sins. They're confessing and they're baptizing, and you can just imagine the kind of experiences they're having. Well, the problem is, is that there was already a system for dealing with people's sins. And there was already a system for people for getting forgiveness. And it wasn't at the River Jordan. It was in Jerusalem in the temple. And they had a whole process involved with it. There were sacrifices and everything else. And yes, there were even offerings and even money that was involved. So you can imagine how the institution might really like the idea of somebody siphoning off some of their business. And we can sit here and say, yeah, that's what the people back then were like, you know. But we're not like that today at all. Well, I have to tell you that that's not necessarily the case. Um, I was reading a blog this week by a guy named Rick Morley, who is a priest at St. Mark's in Basking Ridge, New Jersey. And his blog is called The Garden Path. And in there, he comes up with an example for what, how we might see this experience with John the Baptist and the temple. See, John the Baptist is the person who was a direct threat to the institutional religion of his day. And Rick writes and asks, this is, what would you think if you found that Starbucks had a Vente Skinny Communion <laughs> that you could go down and get? Now, immediately, some of us are, are immediately, well, wow, wow, that's Communion, Starbucks, they, they don't go together. And then Rick asks, and how would you feel if you found that your congregation was going there, and as you passed Starbucks in the morning, you saw them coming out with their Vente Skinny Communions? That gives you more of an idea of the kind of threat that John the Baptist's work um, caused or um, was to the people, uh, the religious institution of that day. And the truth is, is that um, if we're going to be following God, we're going to find ourselves always in this uh, place of tension where we're the people who now saw the lesson saw John the Baptist, got baptized, followed Jesus, and now we think, gosh, we won't do that again. And then we find ourselves being challenged by other forces saying, why aren't they paying attention? Why isn't the church today attending to the needs of people? Why isn't the church being responsive to God's Holy Spirit in, in dealing with the way that things are happening today? And of course, as Episcopalians, among the more established of churches, you know, we're busy wondering how long we can hold out against the onslaught sometimes. But the challenge is, is that those who become followers of God, followers of Christ, have to always realize that things are always going to be in that kind of tension. Now we get to Jesus. John the Baptist is out there baptizing, and Jesus comes to be baptized. There's a scandal for us already because people are being baptized for the forgiveness of sins and confessing their sins, and all of us are scratching our heads saying, well, what was Jesus confessing? You know. But Jesus was baptized, and as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. It said the heavens were torn apart, and he saw the Holy Spirit like a dove descending upon him. Now, it didn't say that there was a rainbow when he came up out of it. 
and little ponies and everything. There, was, there wasn't a rainbow. It said the heavens were torn apart. It did not say that the heavens were carefully cut in two so that when God got over whatever God was doing, God could put them back together again just like they were and everyone could go on just like it was. No. It says that the heavens were torn apart. The heavens were torn apart. Afterwards, some of you who want to can try to put all that back together. It's this idea that things are changing drastically. The people who are around it, of course, it says that Jesus saw this. It doesn't say who else saw it. But the idea is, is that when the Holy Spirit comes, everything changes. In the book of Acts, they're baptized. They have no idea what the Holy Spirit is. And Paul baptizes them in the name of, in, in the name of Jesus. And they're baptized and they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And they go off and do ministry and mission. They speak in tongues and do other things too. They prophesy. But everything changed for them. This is a challenge for us. We like to think that we come to get comfort, but what we actually are coming for is to come to a place where we're open to God's Spirit, and when we're open to God's Spirit, it's going to change us one way or another. Whether we're on the right, whether we're on the left, whether we're for this or for that, God's Spirit, when it gets to us and starts dealing with us, changes every one of us. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this service the Martin Luther King celebration are being hosted here next week. In the 60s, we had people leave our church because the rector went to march with Dr. King. Now, they said that it was the prayer book at that time, but it, it actually predates the prayer book by 10 years. Um, and I found out after the, some of the people died that their friends said, yeah, they just couldn't stand the idea that the rector went, and went to Alabama and marched with Dr. King. So when the Spirit moves us, when things change, it creates tension for us. But we are celebrating the baptism of Jesus today, and in the colic today, it at, talks about us being faithful to the covenant and proclaiming the good news. Do you remember what the covenant was that we made? And those of you who were baptized along the time that I was baptized, it was a different covenant. But every time we baptize somebody today, we all renew our covenant. We promise to continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. We promise to persevere in resisting evil. And whenever we fall into sin, to repent and return to the Lord. Now, for those of you who thought when you were baptized, sin was a dead issue for you, the covenant says different that we've got to persevere. We will proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, that we will seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourself, that we will strive for justice and peace among all people, respecting the dignity of every human being. That is what we were baptized into, and that is the kind of thing that the Holy Spirit is always changing us for to make us more and more able to respond to those promises that we made, to be able to more and more respond to the Spirit of God that is moving in the world today. So the worst case scenario for me is that St. Paul's finds a great routine and gets into it and never changes out of it. I think that is the worst thing that could happen to us. What I would really like is for us to figure out how to worship joyfully, how to worship authentically, how to serve and care for people together, how to pray, and how to lift up one another and support each other in prayer, and to pray for the needs of the world, and be responsive to how God's Holy Spirit is teaching us in every day, in every year, in every era, how to respond to that in a new way. That's what I believe the baptism of Jesus promises for us and invites us to. Amen.